Um, so uh, I just want to quickly, I sent you all the minutes. Uh, hopefully you all got to see them from last week. Do we have a motion to accept them? Make a motion to accept the meeting, uh, the minutes as presented. Second. Okay, second. Second. Okay, and all in favor, everybody's good? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Moving right on to the task at hand. Um, we did get a couple of comments that um, the way we'd set this up to avoid any issues with any Zoom bombing was that we asked anybody from the public to submit questions. They can submit them real time. And I've got my phone right here. We did get a couple um, come in. So I will read those in a minute. But I just wanted to start with, we submitted our press release, our statement of last week. Um, we. It, it actually, we got some pretty good coverage with it, thanks to Bob, we got it out everywhere. And um, I don't think anybody was su surprised with what we said, but I think everybody certainly concurred and was glad to see that we were, um, we were on the job and supporting them all. Um, did any of you get any feedback? No. None okay. from, from me. No. Other okay. than a couple of emails of people who said they saw it and appreciated it, that was it. Right, okay, good. Um, as far as uh, small business relief, there have been a series of other Zoom calls and things like that, conference calls. There was one with the governor today from one to two. I think I'd sent that to you all. I don't know if any of you joined. Um, you know, a lot of what they're talking about is really just trying to help everybody with some of these loans, the PPP program, the disaster loan programs, the bridge loans, all of that. Um, more, the uh, banks have been slow to get these things going, and there's been some glitches along the way, but they were very um, uh, <coughs> optimistic, and they really advised everybody, and this goes for each one of you, that everybody should apply for all of them. Um, so I thought that was interesting. One question that came up that we're going to have to deal with also at some point is just what's happening on the landlord front. I don't know about you, but I've had you know a, a couple of people call me and say, "Is there anything going on when it comes to um, you know any landlord relief?" And um, Kevin, I'm glad you're on because I know uh, you've been talking um, in terms of property taxes and things like that at, at the town level. Can you bring us up to speed on anything that you're you guys are in the middle of of discussing? Well. You know, the governor's order requires the town by April 25th to adopt one of two tax relief programs. One is to allow people, and this would, this would cover the July 1st tax payment. Some towns have quarterly payments so that they've already done with, dealt with their April payments. But uh, we either have to allow people to defer altogether for up to 90 days or to uh, reduce our statutory state mandated 18% annual interest rate to 3%. Um, or, or you can adopt both plans. Now, we haven't done the analysis yet to see how that would affect us. Um, we generally collect $70 million by the end of July. So um, it's, it's, you know, the town's in good financial shape. If we gave people the ability to defer, we can't really figure out how much, how much people would take the opportunity. Um, if they, you know, if we were $25 million short, we could survive the quarter. Um, but it really is something we have to do further analysis, analysis on. And then the town council is the body that has to adopt it on at the meeting on uh, May, no, April 22nd. West Hartford had, had an article about how they were, you know, they were very forward, proactive in giving their residents uh, the relief. And um, so, but we just haven't done the analysis. I don't know how you really decide how much people would take advantage of it or how much they need it. Actually, I should have mentioned too. One program, the the alt the the total deferral requires you to be it's a certified that you've been affected negatively by COVID, and I think it's one test is down twenty percent in your income. The other one is automatic to so go down to three percent interest, and you have to you have to do one or the other or both. So, and that doesn't apply just to real estate taxes; it applies to car taxes and and other taxes that people might owe. Anybody have any questions, specific questions for Kevin on that? I don't know if it's a question for Kevin or for you, uh, Tucker, but do we have any sense about how uh, hampered our business community is? I, I mean, in, a, in the context of the question is, 
you know, a third of Americans live paycheck to paycheck or, you know, crazy numbers like that. One in 10 people lost their jobs. Um, we have a lot of residents who are probably in pretty good financial shape. So they probably are not nervous about a month or two of what's going on. Do we have a sense about the general economic impact in town to our businesses? You know, when it comes to the retail front, you know, they were coming off a tough time of year anyway. So, um, yes, I would say it's, it's pretty significant. Um, they are very, very concerned. They're all working to get as many of these applications in as they can. They're not finding it to be as user friendly as, as people are suggesting. Um, having said that though, um, the New Canaan Community Foundation has set up a fund. Uh, I think they're at $250,000 plus at this point in time. It's going to provide relief on, on many different fronts. There is a second fund. Well, part of that fund, they're going to be making a grant. Um, I believe this is public information, but I'm pretty sure it is. They will be making a grant next week to person to person that serves. We are one of the towns that person to person serves that will be specifically for employee relief. In other words, the, I will share with the merchants or the businesses that this is available. They then will share it with their employees and their employees can go directly to person to person. They don't have to do it through their, through their boss, their whoever, they can go and get some help there. Um, I think that's gonna send a very positive message. Um, I've been hearing sort of anecdotally that many of these businesses that are applying for the PPP, for the, like the Paycheck Protection Program or what have you, um, there's 25% of that that they can actually use for things like overhead and rent. Many of them are just passing that right onto their employees selfishly because they don't want their employees to get picked up and taken by somebody else right, in the right. process. They wanna keep the employees, um, even though they're not gonna be working and they'll be getting paid. But it's, I, 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 don't, have, I don't have any real numbers for you other than yes, it's, it's, people are absolutely terrified. Mm -hmm. is is the typical situation for retail that workers are now at home and not receiving any income during this period or does it just depend on the employer it depends on the employer some of the more corporate retailers are covering but now the furloughs i'm starting to hear about some furloughs um some of the smaller mom and pops have had to just let people go and so they're you know applying for unemployment that kind of thing yeah sorry kevin talk, i just want to talk do you have any sense me? of businesses that are just closing up entirely and it looks like starbucks is totally empty um i do there's uh actually um franco's reopened but initially they closed voluntarily they were more concerned about their own health and the health of their employees They've decided to reopen. I know two. Uh, I know of one other restaurant that is currently open that is considering doing that as well, more because they're just concerned with for the health of their 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 people. Um, so I don't know what the situation is with Starbucks, other than um, I, I think they've been closed since the beginning. The restaurants, um, and this goes to um, one of Terry's questions, which was. You know, she, she, uh, in fact, I should just read it out loud. She said, I was hoping TDAC would entertain a general discussion of the type of general retail, which is shut down completely. Curbside, not applicable. I do not really need an answer unless you have some great ideas. See, the problem is some of the um, landlords aren't even allowing people access to their stores to go in and even process orders. Mm. One of the stores called me and she said, if I can get permission from my landlord to go in the building and just process online orders, I'm happy to do that. And I said, well, that, you know, if, if your landlord will work through that with you. And um, she called me to say the landlord said no one's allowed in the building. So um, I, you know, I, I, everybody, there are several retail stores that are getting very creative and, and coming up with ways to virtual shop. We're, we're starting a program um, next week. We've been sending out um, tons of information and asking them to get back to us so that we can produce these e-blasts. And I have some stats, which I'll read to you later, but um, some of them are getting really creative with ways to keep going, like uh, we're calling it uh, open for orders, shop at home, 
things like that. But, um, and, and the restaurants, as far as the restaurants are concerned, yes, we've been giving a lot of attention to the restaurants only because they are able to stay open. And I reminded everybody, Kevin, that early on, I mean, they're an essential business for the governor, but also early on, we were very concerned that the restaurants were able to stay open because there was a, and this goes back to sort of Mike Handler discussions, there was a concern that maybe we couldn't sustain supply food, food supply here in town with just our grocery stores, that maybe it needed to be supplemented with, with some of the restaurants. And I think the restaurants have done a great job. They're working twice as hard for much less, I mean, they're covering their costs barely. There is another program for the restaurants that came to be, which is great, called Food Rescue US. Some of you may have heard of it. They also received a grant from the Community Foundation for $10,000. Food Rescue will then pay restaurants if they want to, on an ongoing basis, take Tuesday lunches and they provide um, individually packaged food and they're being reimbursed. So um, it it's provides some revenue and some, some continuity, if you will. Um, the, 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 the one question that I'm getting, and I heard it today on the call with the governor that everybody's asking me is when can we reopen? When can we reopen? And I, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I don't think any of us really do. I, the governor did say today that the May 20th for the schools, um, and he said, and that could be the same for the restaurants and bars. So, um, he didn't say that that was absolutely the case, but he did throw it out there. Can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I just want to chime in. Um, Bill Gates was on CNBC today talking about that issue, and uh, New Canaan's been at the forefront of getting testing done. And it seems that the more we get testing done, the more people that are testing, the more people are comfortable getting out. So that seems to be that New Canaan's been at the forefront of that. So the more Mike Handler's update tonight talks about that. Um, but if we get more and more people tested, then more and more people are going to be positive, be more comfortable getting out in public, and that will help business move forward, perhaps. Um, and then, Kevin, I just want to jump back to West Hartford's um, thing that they passed. It seems, it, doesn't it differ from what's on the table in New Canaan? There, there's two options, um, one being a, a, a push to October 1st deferment of the July tax payment at, or um, a reduction in the, the, the penalty. Um, I, it's, it seems to me that New Canaan is taking a different approach or maybe I'm mistaken. No, no, they, I mean, they were talking about, they, I'm not sure whether they adopted one or both. Quite honestly, I think they're, they're very similar. Because three percent okay. three percent interest is not much of a disincentive to uh, to uh, pay your Defer. so if you adopt that um, you're basically allowing people to defer anyway. I think there's one exception for people who are on escrow with their bank, and that's probably thirty five percent of ours. Um, you can't take you can't defer because your taxes are being escrowed right. anyway. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, so 65% of our population pays by check and, um, a lot of them seniors, seniors pay $28 million a year. Um, and I don't know how I suspect, you know, if you have the opportunity to defer it for 90 days, you're going to do it. Um, right. uh, it, it becomes a, a, just a cash flow issue for us. I mean, um, but, understood, but a, lo a lot of the. On the commercial sector, you know, um, where landlords have restaurants that won't be able to recover for a couple months, um, you know, that that's where the deferment will be more helpful. Um, you know, we have mom and pop tenants that, you know, everything's on a case by case basis. So I, I think you have to talk about the, the residential sector and the business sector separately when it comes to that. I agree. And I agree. I imagine the big retailers or the big the big stores that are corporate will pay their taxes. Um, I mean, because it's triple net leases for Walgreens and CVS and some of the the uh, out of town the corporate stores. Right. Um, again, it's hard to analyze what to expect, and I you hate to uh, you know I don't think it's going to be a problem for the town, but we we have to do the analysis before the twenty second of uh, April. 
Yeah, on, Tucker. Been, yes, go, Jack. Um, one thing I, I wonder about is, uh, do we have enough information from the businesses out there? I did talk to a few of them, and uh, you know, their biggest concern, you know, was their rent. Um, two of them have dismissed all their employees. I mean, that was a bit of information. Um, I'm just wondering whether or not um, we should develop a spreadsheet and go out and get that information to be better knowledgeable about what is happening within the business community. A spreadsheet of questions, you know, and, and get an idea. Such as, did you keep your employees on Yeah, did payroll? you keep your employees, you know, what is your biggest concern? Rent was the biggest concern. And, you know, uh, have you talked to your uh, uh, landlord? Some of them have not talked to their landlord. They have not responded. Um, let's see. Back to you, mean the landlord hasn't responded or they haven't communicated? They haven't reached out. They, they have not responded, no. Wait, and the then- landlord, The landlord has not responded to a communication? Yeah, as okay. of yet. And, and what would, I, I'm curious as you, because I, I hear what you're saying, what would we do with the with this data? Well, the thing is, though, we, we kind of are talking about this issue, and I don't know how connected we are to what is exactly happening within the business community. So and one thing I actually asked a couple of them was that are doing business across the, you know, doing it at the door. At what percentage of your business are you doing? And one said 5%, and one said 20%. So, I mean, that to me is actually pretty interesting information for you know what we're going to encounter going forward i think our effort should be to save whatever businesses we can i think you agree with that tucker what you're oh, trying to do absolutely without, without, without a doubt but we have to right. also remember there is an order by the governor right now that all non-essential businesses need to be closed right. so so i applaud anybody who's managed to stay open and continue to generate some some revenue um, and absolutely, my gosh, this is what keeps me up at night these days is I want them all to be able to survive. But mm -hmm. I, I hear what you're saying and what you're asking, but I think, I think that would be a, a significant amount of effort. And I think what we would learn is that they are concerned with overhead rent, back taxes, mm -hmm. and how am I going to now pay for, let's talk retail. I've got all this summer inventory and I'm not going to have money to buy fall. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we could certainly gather that, but I think that would, that would be a lot of work for, I think we somewhat know the answers. We can certainly just ask people to share that with us. That's fine mm -hmm. if they want to voluntarily. I don't know if it needs to be a, uh, a real coordinated effort. Wouldn't the community foundations fund, uh, cover those questions? Could, can we do something in conjunction with that? Effort? Well, they're, what they're, uh, trying to do right now is figure out, um, their intentions are wonderful. They want to be able to be there and assist the business community. What they're struggling with now is they don't want to be the ones to pick winners and losers and what the criteria is going to be. That's why they um, are looking to make some sizable donations to other um, organizations that might be able to then dole it out on an as-needed basis kind of thing. So they're still working through that, Brock. But yes, the answer is yes. They just don't know what that criteria is going to be. They, they were so quick to set up the fund. Um, and now they're trying to figure out how they're actually going to give the money away in a fair basis. i just give you one example. We have three different lenders. One, uh, two are regional, um, um, regional banks, and they're working with me on a deferment suspension of mortgage payments so that it can offer relief to tenants going forward so for X bear. number of months. Right. I have one um, property that we bought from... Um, two people, we'll just call them, they're not willing to, to uh, defer uh, or suspend mortgage payments that I owe them. So that puts me in a bind to try to pass along relief to those tenants. So I think everything's on a case by case basis, but the governor's called mentioned today that uh, the banks are working with borrowers to suspend mortgage payments so that we, in my case as landlords, can pass along relief where where I can for X number of months so that we can get all these businesses through this time um, out to the other side. But that's not always possible depending on who your partners are, who your you know, lenders are. 
Right. Right. Um, Kevin, uh, sorry, but uh, everybody's asking, where's Mike Handler tonight? 722, did he not make a call? He emailed. He did an email. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, Normally, every phone in my house starts. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, they, he did an email. Okay. That's funny because the system sends both out at the same time. We, we've got to get rid of the system. It, it, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not operating properly, so. Huh, okay. I think uh, one of the things that we're going to see is that potentially, hopefully, that there's an easing up of restrictions, that it's not all, all of a sudden... Um, people are out of their house and socializing. There's probably this middle tier that's going to happen in which um, people are more likely to be out of their house, but still taking precautions and avoiding large gatherings. Um, and it might be in terms of the retail that there's an ability for them to have some temporary by appointment only um, with, with people coming into the stores, almost feeling like they're treated, you know, in especially one-on-one -on -one environment. And, and I don't know, the, I'm just thinking about some kind of interim period in which you don't have large gatherings. Yeah, Amanda, you're right. I mean, it, and it's pretty much what, what consumers have been demanding of retail for the last two to three years, they'll be forced to do, and it should help. Are you talking about if the governor lifts his order? Because the governor right now says no non-essential businesses. Absolutely. It would have to correspond with the loosening up of the, gover the governor's order. Um, and who knows if that'll happen. But it, it, it seems unlikely from what we're hearing um, federally that that things are going to loosen up entirely suddenly that there's going to be something that happens some incremental opening up could i throw out the idea that perhaps you know being one of the wealthiest towns in america and you look at retail across the country hopefully a lot of our both landlords and businesses have some sustainability to go a month or two It'll be a hit, but it's not going to be life-threatening. I'm not sure you're right on that, Kevin. Well, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing out the idea because because if, if you can't make it in New Canaan, Connecticut, you know all the rest of the country is hurting as well, and the government can't has almost only so much assistance they can give. Yeah. Um, so, to me, the I mean the question is, I mean, could, if this drags down beyond another month, then I think people really have problems. Well, but that's what we're looking at, right? Yeah. And 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 what are the, what do they do in the meantime? I mean, what, what you do is you you try to get relief from just from current payments, <clears throat> or just go into arrears. I mean, people won't pay their rent, and they won't pay their their suppliers, and they won't you know their everything's going to be sort of deferred. I think that's going to be more of the case than <laughs> and not. Uh, and then people will figure out where they are if they if they're able to go back into business. I heard today the Sugar Bowl in uh, Darien is closing permanently. Yes. Uh, so oh, that's, really a shame. that's a, that's that a was, real institution. Yeah. But I mean, it's actually because of the, the owners were both in, in a situation where this was the kind of thing that could knock them out. So. Right. Well, the one thing you hope is you don't all of a sudden get these big corporations and we turn into Westport, you know, the only ones that can afford the rents. So. Yeah. Well, certainly this is going to have an impact for the rest of the year. It's going to take a while to recover from this. But, you know, someone said, I guess, you know, you don't want to pick winners and losers, but to some extent you want to pick who you really need to have here um, and try to help help some. Yeah, I oh. think in our town also, um, our community of citizens is going to want to help. Exactly, out. exactly. And I think as soon as they're given the great right. light, they're going to want to give business to locals local businesses that are threatened by what they've just been through. And to the extent that we can somehow promote that as much as possible, that, that seems like what our role is here. 
And that's, Amanda, you're absolutely right. And that um, has taken place to some extent. You know, early on, it was a great way to keep a store going was to buy some gift cards, you know, that you could use further down the road. There was a lot of that. And I can tell you, um, Betty Lavastic had also submitted more of a comment, but she was just curious what was happening for the non-restaurant um, businesses. And I was telling her, I went through and put together a whole timeline of all of the different blasts that the chamber has sent out. You know, we send, we send something to all of our businesses and say, send us what you're doing. We've been putting out posts every single week and we're getting huge open rates. I mean, so everybody, because everybody's sitting in front of their computers and taking advantage of it. Um, what we've been spending the lion's share of our time at the chamber, the work that we've been performing over the last couple of weeks, it's really all about getting these guys the information on the loan programs, on the relief programs. That seemed to be an immediate need. So we've run a couple of webinars. We've had a lot of one-on-ones helping people through that, um, along with promoting via social media and all of that, all of the different things that um, the businesses, again, restaurants and non-restaurants are doing. But there's several businesses, like we said, who have just voluntarily shut their door, didn't even try a virtual shopping uh, for, for a variety of reasons. And then there's, sadly, there's a whole slew of them that never quite got their social media where it needed to be even before this crisis. So now they don't even have that to fall back on in the way of Instagram and um, Facebook and what have you. I don't, I don't know how hard this would be and if we'd have a platform, but could we somehow create a virtual Elm Street for all of the retailers to have a, you know, a storefront on? I mean, I don't know enough of you know, how they could handle their inventory or something, but that seems like something TDAC could be behind. Is that there with either of the, the three that we were trying to merge, you know, the platforms that are already there, Live New Canaan. Um, Explore New Canaan, Canaan. yeah. No, no, I'm saying all of that is there. Yep. To Alan's point, I mean, that's a great idea. Do we have the platform that we could promote that on somehow? Right, and we'd have to have the e-commerce ability right. or how, how we could do that but it just we could kind of we could recreate elm street and at least the town could support it and we could you know do it on live new canaan and it could be an interesting thing to for the for nationally to go out with to see what yeah. town is doing so jack trefero it brings me back to the days of cyber sidewalks mm -hmm. right <laughs> i do think that idea is interesting though i do too sure. i can I can see like an animated um, aerial view of the town where you can go down, walk down the street and click on a particular retailer or restaurant. And then that links you to your, their website where they have a promotion on a particular product. The street view is actually prettier. The top just shows the air conditioners, the black <laughs> flat roof. But the point is well taken. The trouble with that though, people sitting at home probably aren't real interested in buying clothing or shoes or you know you, there's a certain amount of uh you can always buy shoes kevin come on <laughs> now when you can't walk out and show them to anybody what they are buying kevin which hasn't stopped is they are buying children's birthdays you know yeah. they're yeah. still going out mm -hmm. and getting things for birthdays wives yeah. birthdays i mean i get it you're not buying a dress for a, an event anymore i was surprised i was surprised earth garden seems to be open or at least they, they are and they and by the way so i had mike dinan do a little piece on them today because they're doing a lot of um Easter business. Are they an essential business? They claim they're under that landscaping kind of, you know. Oh, wow. On design. <laughs> I had Sancho call me and, and he's so bad that the delis are not covered by like grocery stores or like, mm -hmm. and um, why can't he uh, deliver to the door? Have you he's seen Joe's Pizza? Day. Have you gone to Joe's Pizza? Yeah. Joe's is amazing. Joe, Joe. See, his whole lobby is flour, milk, berries, bread, he, uh, toilet he, paper. Toilet paper. <laughs> he led the charge and set the tone for everybody. <laughs> yeah, if we could highlight what he's yeah. done, I mean, that's incredible. And he's what he's also doing that's so remarkable is he's doing this whole giving back while he, you know, and that's provide people are making donations to him, and that's, that's back to food rescue and things like that that are keeping everybody else in business. I can explore um, in the next week or so, I, or the next few days, I can explore with BJ and a few others what it would take. I mean, we did have an intern who went around last summer, I believe, and we had them for Explore New Canaan take a photo of the front of each and every business so that we could have that on the landing page for Explore New Canaan. 
I could, I could pull that out and see if there's some way that we could make a, um, I, I, there, there's, there's got to be some way that we can pull something off like that, uh, Alan. I, I really like that idea. This is your main street. This is your Elm Street. This is your village. Yeah. Um, Tucker, I mean, I, I guess the effort, because you and I have talked about this in the past, the retailers did not jump on board the concept of, of online shopping in the past. Can we negotiate them there now and help them do that? And, and the reasons in the past were time, ability, and effort and everything, but understandably, I guess, um, can we get them there where we couldn't get them in the past? I think so. The, the problem that you're going to have, though, is, that, again, there's several that were told they're not even allowed to be in the building. How about if we, how about if we did sort of like a QVC, hmm. a local QVC, and you sort of have, we could use oh. channel, channel 79, and people can promote their products on, on channel 79. Can we do that as a commercial nonprofit? I think, oh. I think the answer is going to be no, but it's worth investigating. But in the past, profit making and 79 have not been uh, not part of. But we're in an emergency. I, that, that's why I say it's worth investigating. You know, who's, who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna challenge you? Do these retailers yeah, have each, inventory? You know, each business that wants to be part of this. Do, uh, uh, you know, if you can have on, the, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a Zoom meeting going on and somebody says, I have this product here on sale. And so we, we, would, we, would, we would have to, and we can, but we would have to increase the skill set and capabilities of 79 from zero to a thousand percent. And it can. Right. Or we just use the Zoom format that you just, just talked about. Zoom. 79 has zero capabilities. We would have to increase them. And no, we can do that. We're broadcasting our meetings with Zoom over 79. We're simply, they're connected to the Zoom. Yeah, well, we, we can have a, discussion, a longer discussion on that. It can be done, yes. Could we, could we do a live stream on Live New Canaan or on our New Canaan site, which is, you know, the QVC format there? We, we, you can do it anywhere, Alan. To your point is, it's, it's creating the effort that goes behind it. Right. And again, it all can be done at 79, Live New Canaan, Explore New Canaan could all be simultaneous distribution sites. Yeah, but right Bob, on. what if we invited all the merchants? I mean, the town's got a Zoom that's got the capability of having hundreds of, of participants at one time. So what if we said, you know, Tuesdays and Thursday night, Tuesday and Thursdays from two to four was, you know, shopping New Canaan or whatever, and each business could, could come on. I mean, I could be sitting here saying, and I'm selling this scarf this yeah. week, isn't it? Beautiful, and it's twenty five dollars. Call me tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be kind of fun too. Yeah, you can't transact there, so right. So I would say, if you're interested, you know, here here's our number. Here's our number or our our, our, our website, and just pay on uh, the I, I Venmo. <laughs> right. I think the seeds of this idea are really really good. The logistics need a lot of working out, but, and we're not going to work it out here in the next fifteen minutes. But but the concept is great. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Well, the chamber, the chamber can do anything. <laughs> right, I'm going to mute you now. <laughs> so I can, do, I can do that if you want me to, Tucker. All the, all the, all the energy you put into the sidewalk sale, you just have to do it yeah. virtually. Well, no, listen, I am promising these guys that we're going to have some sort of a sidewalk sale and whether it's tied in with a massive celebration when we're all back out or what have you, but we, they they want the sidewalk sale and I'm hoping to be able to, um, allow them all to participate and not charge them a fee. That's what I'm hoping to do, is mm -hmm. let them all just take a, take a booth like they normally do, but not have to pay to be in it this year. Kevin's got the budget. It would no, be no. nice if someone in town could cover that. I wonder if he, uh, he I'm thinking. That. I'm hoping to work with the Community Foundation on that. Yeah. That's where we're going right. with it. But, and but that could be a nice, discreet way of somebody saying, yeah, I'll cover a couple of thousand dollars. We're, we're well into the conversations. Hopefully it'll all be uh, yeah. finalized next week, but that's the route we're going. But Amanda was right. You know, people want to help. So I, I think if you give them some opportunity to say, I'll buy that or, you know. Yeah. I'll okay. Stop. So I'm going to task you all with thinking about this over the next 48 hours mm -hmm. of how you think we could pull something off. Very simply would be to set up something like this and just say to each store, you know, here's your Zoom invitation. Let us know if you're interested. We send them an invitation. They can come on and Zoom and sell their stuff. If it if we think that we've got the appetite and the bandwidth and the people that could make it bigger and better, we can go that route. But at the very least, we could pull off something like this. Just and it would Set be up fun. a Zoom meeting with the merchants and invite them, and and, yeah. and you can have you can have up to zooming downtown, right? Yeah, and yeah. get it, 
<clears throat> get the discussion going, and then you figure it out, and then you, you open up the virtual New Canaan. How many of your how many of your merchants, uh, Tucker, um, have their own websites where they can actually transact and take a credit card? I can't give you that information, um, but I would say, first of all, ninety nine percent of them have websites. Well, I, but a website where they can transact. That I, I don't know the number. I, I don't know, but but those, it could be. Those would be that's low hanging fruit. Those people could be right away. You wouldn't have to worry about the, you know, figuring out how to do the transactions. And you know, quite honestly, it would also give them a little bit of an uplift to be able right. to participate in something yeah. that might work. And maybe if it works great, and if it doesn't I, work. And I don't, I don't think that people mm -hmm. would mind calling up with the credit card because here's an opportunity to interact and, and, and yeah. have some I mean, community. That's what you're doing every night now when people are doing takeout, they're calling Soleil and saying, I'll have exactly. that. And here's my credit card number and put $10 tip on there and off you go. I did that for lunch today. You know, they, they've taken a few minutes, you, go, you get your order. All right, so Start. would everyone give this some thought? And then what we can do is you can send me any ideas or, you know, methods that you think we could pull this off. And I'll um, put a few folks on it too, and then we'll just kind of report back. I think I the chamber, but the chamber should be the- uh, I know, the I know, Kevin, I know. <laughs> I've heard you the first time, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I just chime in one more time on is maybe outside of TDAC scope, but is there any way to partner with community foundation to promote testing? The more testing we get, more people that are negative, more people want to get out in public as we move through the summer months to transact business. That's going to be a key longer term goal. How do we do that, Kevin, in, in terms of funding the, the entire population who came and getting tested or logistically? Isn't there a potential conflict here? I'm just, I'm just thinking, okay, I'm somebody who's been tested and you're not. I know. Yeah. I go out. Isn't there, I don't know, something about it rings a little bit. The uh, discrimination uh, issue there, I'm yeah. sure. Well, and, and even, if it, even if it doesn't, someone who's tested negative, going out and interacting with people, whether it's the supermarkets or wherever, that may have not been tested, I, you know, how, how, Kevin, that's, you know, that, that well, goes look, to government. Well, look, I mean, look, what's, look what's happened in the other countries. I mean, Wuhan is, is opening up, right? And, Denmark. Uh, out in the state of Washington, people are beginning to open, they're moving hospitals away from there because it, once it's passed, it sort of moves on to someplace else. Kind of weird, but that's how it but, operates. But what's allowing them to open up? I'm sure they're, they're doing testing to give people comfort. Well, that's, that's a good question, Brock. I, yeah, I don't know the answer well, to that. Um, Nancy, back to our earlier discussion, somewhat related here, she just did, did just text me to say that Governor Cuomo's order today um, that essential businesses is very broad. It seems like there are ways for businesses to offer food or needed supplies and convert to, from non-essential to essential. She also said as far as what we were talking about a minute ago, we could run a QVC through maybe a nonprofit, kind of like an auction, perhaps a small portion goes to a nonprofit. At any rate, I don't. I, I don't know if we're going to solve that part tonight, um, Brock. But Kevin, I, I think he's right. There's some funds there. You know, I would also wouldn't discount the possibility we'd find some angels in town that want to help, and um, and we don't need a lot of money to do some things. To I think just getting the enthusiasm about trying to do something would be would be helpful for people. Yeah, Kevin, to your point, it's it's and Amanda's too. It's just giving people the channel that makes it easy. Yeah, because if it if it's if it's complex, people are still not going to do it. But if we can figure out a way to give a channel that makes it easy, people do want to help and they will. Yeah. I not to to change things to a sour note, but we've also just been through and will probably continue to uh, accumulate deaths of some of our population. And I, I, I think as a community, um, I know that there's issues of privacy and of course uh, families are protecting their privacy, but when we come out of this, there's an, an opportunity to also come together as a community and, and mourn together. Um, just something, I, I know this is outside of economic development, but it is about community and about what makes New Canaan special. So I just wanna put that out there for people to think about. Um, probably the different religious organizations are doing things, but um, I don't know. 
You know, I, I, that's a good I, point. I would give you my perspective. I, I thought this was by now going to be a lot worse. But the fact that we crunched down and stayed home has really helped re minimize. 11 deaths is, is, is a lot, but um, minimize the impact on us. And, and if we, we reach the apex and we don't, we don't have another, we may have two more, two more dozen deaths, but that's going to be different than it could have been if we didn't take the drastic action to get people staying at home. Nancy does want you all to know that the Historical Society is now a collection for goggles for doctors. People can donate, use ski goggles, and they'll distribute them where needed. Oh, ski goggles. Yeah, I've heard That's that. A couple of, of the mountains up in Vermont sent down a lot of their um, past stock. Yeah. You know, they, they said today that... Um, I guess Norwalk Hospital or Stanford Hospital had, did not have an increased admission. Right. So maybe we're seeing the first glimmer of hope that. Uh, we're... Well, that'd be great. I, I want to applaud Bob. I, I missed the last meeting, but this uh, press release is really fantastic. Thank you for all your work you did there. And um, one of the things we haven't talked about tonight is. Uh, the area on protect the arts and creative economy. Um, I know we've been talking about commerce and retail um, and, and all of that's important. Is there anything we can do as TDAC to support some of the not-for-profits uh, that are really suffering um, as well? Uh, and we'll continue to lose fundraising capacity. And I know this, Greg and Karen, um, maybe you guys can speak to how this might be impacting you so we can be more aware. Yeah, I think when uh, the situation allows gatherings and all, uh, I've, I've talked to B and Z a little bit about the possibility of doing some things that may be outside yeah. our existing permit. But it, you're right. I mean, for us, it's devastating. Um, you know, I had just gotten permission to uh, begin the tour season earlier. And I'm not probably going to get uh, to operate the tours at all between now and the end of our fiscal year, which is June 30th. And although we haven't formally canceled our fundraiser, there's just no way in heck we could pull it together at this point if we wanted to. Um, and then, of course, there's human behavior. And as you've pointed out previously, what are people going to do when given the opportunity to get out again? So, I mean, it's, it's a major problem for, for the glass house. But Greg, are you going to reschedule, make, make it an end of summer, <clears throat> end of summer party rather than a summer party? Yeah. I mean, I'm, the title, I'm not sure what we're going to do with, um, fall, it, it already had a certain number of events scheduled. And then everybody who had a spring thing is kind of rescheduled to the fall. If things begin to turn around, I, I would look to do something in the summer. And yet, uh, also, Greg, which may help you, but I mean, a lot we're seeing a lot of organizations, and we're involved with some of them, uh, moving to uh, virtual galas, and yeah. they are proving to work well. Um, we're having some success there. Uh, it's 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 just live theater is what it becomes. Um, but anyway, that's just, there, there is a big movement there and the arts community has moved quickly as we've seen um, uh, mostly theater, obviously, as we've seen across the country, not just canceling the summer season, but also canceling the 2020 season. A lot of right. theater across the country. What, what if we did a virtual concert um, yeah. fundraiser for the, for, the, for the nonprofits in town? Yep. So I've had some um, early conversations with um, Harry Connick. I haven't personally spoken with him, but I've asked some people that are close to him to ask if he might help us on that front. I know Paul Simon did something. I remember years ago, remember years ago when Paul Simon and Harry Connick and Brian Williams did a big event for the- uh, They raised $600,000 at the high school. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and they're all doing their own individual What's things. I've been Katrina? seeing them all out there. Was that for uh, Katrina? No, 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 no. Staying put. Stay, that was stay, for staying put. It was for the first responders, I thought. I mean, they invited oh, all the EMS. Right. They sort of honored the first responders, but the, uh, the, money. the money went to staying put. 
So I'm hoping that, um, again, I just checked in with my friend today and she was going to check in with him, with Harry again, and see if, I'm hoping that there would be something like that that we could do. That's great. Great. Everyone's aware of the Summer Theater of New Canaan is having their, um, their kind of team. Tonight. 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 Tonight and uh, this weekend, I think, Saturday. Yeah, but Sunday. wouldn't you know it, I got reamed by one resident who was very upset that we did this over Passover and Easter and oh, that we should gosh. be praying, not partying. Oh, so I can't win. And I, you know, my response was it was unintentional. We did not look at the calendar. We probably should have when Ed and I were planning that. But And they have a choice. We said we think there's time to do both. And I've talked to some of my very devout friends who've said they're going to virtual mass every day, but they also have time to be able to do this in the evening. Well, I think what was especially um, compelling about the whole thing is partnering with restaurants and just the, right. the idea of celebrating New Canaan and, and going to dinner, get your curbside takeout, right. and watch virtual shows. And the Y did a program last week on Saturday night where they had a whole packet of family activities, and apparently that was very successful. Nancy's reminding me that they had to cancel their step into summer, which was in June. So they're throwing all of their efforts into October for design. Okay, I'm glad that's still sort of moving along. Yes. We, um, you know, at Grace Farms, we have, we're publishing a resource for nonprofits um, on a weekly basis on the website. Um, you know, we were just getting a lot of calls. I was getting a lot of calls from my former grantees at GE Foundation, um, sort of panicking about what to do. Um, and also um, our space grantees at, um, at Grace Farms. So putting together something, and I think as we reopen, trying to figure out how we can be a platform um, for nonprofits to come together, um, either with legal support or um, figuring out how we can support, but it's, um, it's really a devastating time for nonprofit organizations. Mm. Grace Farms feels a little bit in a different category, gratefully, right? We're not going through any layoffs and those kind of things, but. Okay. All right, um, a lot to think about, but I think, I think we might be on to a couple of, uh, couple of things that might work in the meantime. Um, let me just see, I'm getting a lot of... Uh, we are planning, um, I'll have the date tomorrow, but we are partnering with the library. We always have a program in May called Small Business Big Ideas. Um, this year, we're moving it up and we're going to have it starting next week and we're going to have a series of how to market your, your business during this time. I mean, what are some strategies that are working for some people? And it, quite frankly, if, if we get some of this virtual shopping thing going, and uh, that might be part of it. So we're pulling all that together. We're just trying to throw all of our efforts in a way to help these businesses survive during this time enough so that we, they can reopen when we get back out there and then have some major effort to stimulate everybody being out there spending some money. And I think, Tucker, it's important to, from a messaging standpoint, to understand the way we chose to position it in our press release even is that we're, we're, we're doing this for them, but we're doing this for us, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a community level thing. Mm -hmm. We need the community to thrive. Mm -hmm. So therefore we need people to use the community. So it's not just, an effort to save stores, right. per se, it's, it, it's, it, it well, helps the community. We always, the community piece obviously is first and foremost, but one thing that we always remind people is, you know, a robust thriving town supports your property values. I mean, it's what people say why they move here besides our That's schools, right. they love our downtown. So it's, it's, it, Greg, I, you're getting in the dark over there. You look like Greg, you're under it, like you're, you're about to be <laughs> interrogated. I didn't turn on the lights when we started. It's across the room. Okay. <laughs> One of the, the other things I want to say is, is Pete acts about, uh, is about highlighting what makes New Canaan special. Mm -hmm. And the volunteerism recently um, mm -hmm. is just been astounding. And I think that that is important to it, it represents who we are and that that will become important to as a reflection after we get through this to talk about those things how right. coming together i don't know if any of you saw on channel 12 they did a piece on new canaan last night on the idea that kevin had seen up in ridgefield and we decided to implement it here where everybody was partnered up a, a volunteer was partnered with somebody that needed assistance 
most likely a senior citizen and it's been a great res great response for everybody so. all right um anything else i think what i'd like to do unless you guys feel otherwise is maybe schedule again for next thursday if we're going to move on some of this stuff uh, I feel like we need to gather the information and do same place, same time next Thursday. Works for me. Okay. I'll send out another invite. Yeah. All right, Thank motion you. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn and everybody at eight o'clock, nine, summer yes. theater training. Thank you, everybody. Be in Thank touch. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.